Okay, so a uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, to start off with, I wish you all a very happy and uh, safe Diwali. I'm Anirudh, a BSc second year student at uh, Chennai Mathematical Institute. A uh, huge thanks to all of you for uh, attending this lecture organized by uh, STEMS. So it's an honor to introduce Professor Amarjeet Budhiraja of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Uh, Professor Amarjeet obtained his PhD in statistics from uh, UNC under the guidance of Professor Gopi Gopinath Kali Kalyanpur. Uh, his research interests include probability and uh, stochastic processes and many more. Uh, he is also the author of the book, uh, Analysis and Approximation of Rare Events. Uh, he has held various professional responsibilities at universities and institutes in various countries and has contributed actively in the editorial work of several journals, including the prestigious Annals of Applied Probability, Annals of Applied Math and Optimization, etc. Uh, he's also a fellow of the Institute of Mathematical Statistics. So just a quick instruction before uh, Professor uh, Amarjeet uh, takes over uh, to amaze all of you to give us a sneak peek into the humongous world of probability. Uh, please use the chat box for your questions and uh, we'll post them to Professor Amarjeet uh, as and when the time is appropriate. So uh, over to you, Professor. I hope all of you enjoy. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot to do uh, Anirudh and Nambik for uh, inviting me to give this talk. It's a, it's a great honor, uh, you know, uh, to speak in this forum. You know, especially CMI, you know, holds a special place in my heart because my some of my greatest mentors and teachers uh, are at CMI. Uh, and uh, so so today, you know, uh, so first I should apologize to uh, you know per perhaps. Um, uh, more advanced uh, students and professors in the audience that this talk is really uh, pitched at a very elementary level, you know, uh, really for high school students. So uh, I, I, perhaps it will be boring for you. And so uh, apologies in advance. Uh, so yes, uh, so today I want to uh, you know, talk a little bit about uh, uh, probability and uh, what probabilists do. Um, and so, so let me uh, let me start. And again, you know, please uh, ask me questions uh, if you have any. Stop me anytime, uh, and I'll be happy to try to answer them. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, I'll start by this uh, comment that you know uh, the randomness and uh, uncertainty are all around us. And um, uh, this uh, quote by Christian uh, Huggins uh, perhaps uh, captures it well. Uh, I believe that we do not know anything for certain but everything probably. Uh, so uh, ev uh, everything that we see around us has you know, some sort of randomness and uncertainty associated with it. And probability theory gives us a, a rigorous uh, math framework for quantifying this randomness and uncertainty in an organized and disciplined uh, fashion. Um, so uh, you know, uh, probability theory, of course, uh, uh, makes appearance in uh, many, many different fields and uh, areas. And I listed some that uh, could fit on a single slide. Uh, so for example, in statistics, it, uh, it forms the foundations of uh, uh, the theory of uh, statistical estimation and inference and the modern uh, um, area of data science. Uh, in physics, you know, it has long been used in uh, quantum mechanics and statistical thermodynamics. Um, uh, in biology, you know, uh, uh, genetics and um, study of um, uh, time, uh, temporal and spatial dynamics of um, uh, biological populations at all scales, you know, be it be intracellular or, you know, at the level of, um, um, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, species and, uh, and, and populations of animals. Um, in chemistry, you know, for example, uh, molecular dynamics, chemical reaction kinetics, uh, these are some topics which use probability theory uh, quite a bit. Uh, with computer science, there are very intimate connections, you know, uh, things like randomized algorithms, uh, but also the modern fields of machine learning and artificial intelligence are rooted in uh, uh, probability theory. Uh, in atmospheric sciences, uh, uh, the, the mathematics of, you know, uh, uh, forecasts, you know, climate and weather forecasts uh, uh, is, you know, is deeply influenced by uh, probability okay. theory. Um, mathematical, mathematical finance, you know, is another area where, you know, probability theory, uh, sophi very sophisticated probability theory has been used, uh, and, you know, to, uh, uh, to great uh, impact. Uh, political science, uh, also, you know, medicine and public health, you know, uh, 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 probability theory has been uh, uh, present for a long time, you know, things like uh, clinical trials, but also, you know, modern fields of bioinformatics and genomics and so on. 
And there are many, many other fields, you know, uh, which uh, uh, I, I simply can't list all of them here. Um, and uh, so, uh, you, you know, uh, it's it's not just that uh, you know probability uh, theory um, is is plays an assisting role in other uh, exciting areas of science. Uh, you know, it is a very uh, you know um, vibrant and exciting field in its own right. Uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, there is this perhaps a, a, a quote by Laplace, you know, one of the early founders uh, of probability theory, which uh, you know uh, gives a modest view of um, um, uh, of probability, saying that that uh, at the end, you know, it's nothing but common sense, and you know, it's it's a way to uh, say with exactness what uh, we already know uh, uh, instinctively. Uh, and uh, so in some sense, I think uh, this is a uh, um, uh, reflection of that uh, in early times of, uh, uh, you know, probability theory when it was being developed, uh, the times of Laplace. Uh, but uh, it's certainly understating the place, uh, you know, uh, probability theory takes uh, in the field of mathematics uh, in, in the current time. Uh, you know, one indication of that how, uh, um, you know, sophisticated and, and, and central probability theory is to the field of mathematics is that in recent years, you know, several fields medals, which are, uh, you know, uh, perhaps, uh, not perhaps, definitely the highest award uh, given in uh, mathematics, um, uh, you know, went to um, researchers in probability or, you know, uh, uh, people whose research in significant way intersected with probability theory. Um, and, and, you know, uh, uh, probability theory is at, is at the center of things, you know, many branches of mathematics uh, intersect with probability. Uh, with probability theory. Um, and, uh, you know, those of you uh, uh, um, in the audience uh, uh, thinking about, uh, well, this is something that I like to do uh, um, in, in, in college uh, or uh, in my uh, you know, master's and PhD uh, uh, studies, uh, you know, I just wanted to point out, you know, some of the, uh, the things, uh, uh, areas which kind of play a crucial role uh, in uh, kind of um, developing the mathematics of probability theory. And, you know, so I listed a bunch of topics here. The first three of them, you know, those of you who are in uh, college uh, would uh, definitely already be seeing it. Uh, but the last three topics are perhaps uh, ones which you, you'll see more uh, um, at a master's level or a PhD level. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, good to have, uh, for many of you, you know, in, uh, who are in high school, perhaps these are just names and titles, but it's good to have these things in mind when you're thinking about, well, what things I need to learn when I, um, uh, uh, if I want to uh, pursue probability theory. So, you know, uh, at the core are in real and complex analysis, abstract algebra, topology, functional analysis, uh, partial differential equations, and measure theory. And I'll, and I'll, I'll say more about measure theory since it forms the uh, backbone of probability theory, uh, and it's uh, absolutely uh, central uh, in its development. And then I also listed a, a bunch of other uh, areas which uh, perhaps have a less direct connection, but still very significant connection with probability theory. Uh, and uh, you know, increasingly more and more uh, um, uh, in exciting research is occurring at the interface uh, of uh, 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 probability and these other areas of uh, mathematics. Uh, Okay, so uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll say a word about uh, you know uh, measure theory. Your measure theory, of course, is a very classical uh, branch of uh, mathematics, uh, and uh, for a while, you know, a probability theory was uh, very dismissively thought of as a, a special case of measure theory. Uh, you know, a, a, um, a small subset of measure theory, uh, particularly uh, um, specifically uh, uh, measure theory for uh, measures whose total mass is one. Uh, and you know, so that was a very simplistic, simplistic and uh, naive opinion about what probability theory is. Uh, but of course, you know that's far from uh, being true. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, quote from Terence Tao, you know, who's uh, one of the leading mathematicians of our time, uh, I think says it well uh, that uh, at a purely formal level, one could call probability theory the study of measure spaces with total measure one. Uh, but that would be like uh, calling number theory. Uh, the study of strings of digits which terminate. So, you know, as uh, the second uh, statement is uh, very laughable, you know, uh, uh, the, the same can be said about the first statement. Uh, so, so what is measure theory and why is it central to probability theory? 
Uh, so uh, I would like to kind of, you know, um, uh, say a little bit more about that. And but in order to say that, you know, we have to go back and talk about something, uh, some very elementary concepts first. And I apologize to those, you know, for who, uh, you know, this would be kind of boring, uh, uh, you know, an elementary discussion, but uh, uh, for the benefit of, um, um, uh, you know, students in the room. Uh, let me just, uh, you know, talk about some very elementary probability concepts. So, you know, um, uh, really uh, what we are trying to do in, in probability uh, um, uh, problems is to, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, assign, uh, you know, quantify uh, the randomness in, in some phenomena that we have, uh, uh, that we are interested in. Uh, and uh, um, underlying uh, such a phenomena is the notion of an experiment. Uh, and uh, one can think of an experiment as an activity that results in exactly one among a known list of distinct outcomes. So for example, think about, you know, uh, the activity could be tossing of a coin. Uh, and then uh, when you toss a coin, you don't know exactly what's going to happen, whether you're going to get a heads or you're going to get a tails, but you know exactly the set of things that could happen. You could get a heads or you could get a tails. Maybe a little bit more, uh, uh, um, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a more complex thing, suppose you roll a die. Okay, so at this time, you know, uh, uh, you could have, you know, six possible things, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, you don't know which one of it is occurring, but you have a list of exactly what could occur. And uh, so the next important notion is that of a sample space and the sample space is just uh, the set of all the possible outcomes of this, this experiment. And usually we'll denote it by the simple symbol omega. And um, so, um, so let me see if I can uh, write uh, something here. Um, so in the uh, special case, uh, you know, where the experiment is rolling of a die, you know, uh, omega is simply uh, this set, which consists of six elements, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, the third important notion is that of an event. An event is any subset of the sample space. You know, so in this particular example, you know, you could take your favorite subset, you know, two, three, four, three, five, six, uh, the, the subset uh, con consisting of, of six only, the empty set, the whole space, all of these are subsets of the sample space and they are referred to as events associated with these experiments. Um, and the, the, this fourth bullet you know, is, a, is an important uh, point. Uh, 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 we say that an event A occurs if on running the experiment, the outcome of the experiment belongs to the event, right? When you conduct the experiment, we know exactly one of uh, uh, the outcomes will happen. And we say that the event occurs if that outcome belongs to that event. So for example, you know, let's think about the event A, which is two, four, six which you can also think about the event that when you roll the die, you get an even number. And uh, so if uh, we run the experiment and, uh, you know, uh, namely we throw the die and we see the number four, then we say, okay, A has occurred because four belongs to this set and so on. Okay, so the, the first step, you know, in uh, quantifying uh, uncertainty in a probability experiment of the form that I've described uh, is uh, to assign probabilities to the, variance event, uh, to the various events in the experiment. So, you know, how does one assign probabilities to events? So, um, you know, uh, uh, here is for a first and uh, perhaps, uh, you know, a naive attempt at defining probabilities. So let's go back to this event, you know, of getting an even number. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, intuitively, you know the answer to that, you know, what is the probability that you'll get an even number? Well, that probability is half, but let's ask, you know, why that probability is half. So why is, you know, probability of A is half, well, so if you, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, review the logic that leads you to the answer one over two, uh, it's uh, simply this, that, you know, when you um, uh, roll the die, you could get, you know, any of these six possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and of which three of which correspond to it being an even number. So two, four, and six. And so probability of A is, you know, three over six, which is half. Or in other words, you know, this can be written as, you know, the total number in the sample space, so omega, I guess, which in this case is six, and the number of outcomes in the event A. 
And so maybe, you know, that is a good definition of a probability that, you know, the probability of an event A is simply obtained by counting how many different outcomes there are in, in the set A and dividing it by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Now, of course, uh, you know, those of you uh, who, who kind of uh, 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 thinking about this will say, of course, this is ridiculous. You know, I could this way, I could justify anything, uh, right? You know, if I want to uh, ask what is the probability that uh, the moon is made of cheese, I could say, well, moon is either made of cheese or it is not made of cheese. So probability that it is made of cheese is half. Uh, or, you know, uh, something more concrete, you know, uh, uh, suppose I want to ask what is the probability that when I roll a die, I get the number six. Well, you could use the same logic. You say, okay, my experiment is going to be that I'm only going to observe when I roll the die, whether I get the number six or I don't get the number six. So then my outcome space only contains two things. I get the number six or I don't get the number six. And so probability that I get the number six should be 50%, which all of us know is not true. I mean, anybody who has rolled the die a bunch of times knows that that's not true. So, uh, so clearly this definition is inadequate or uh, 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 at the least. Um, but uh, nevertheless, you know, this, probability, uh, this definition of probability is valid uh, in many situations, you know, specifically if um, if you think about uh, what is going wrong in the uh, uh, the description that I gave for the second uh, example, is that the outcomes that are listed, uh, you know, you get a six or you don't get a six, they are not equally likely. You know, the uh, the outcome of getting a six is much less chance than uh, not getting a six. Uh, and so the above definition of probability that I gave, you know. Um, uh, is, is, is a reasonable definition if outcomes in the sample space have an equal chance of occurring. You know, there's not an equal chance of moon being made of cheese and moon not being made of cheese. That's the problem. Um, and uh, so such a setting you know, is called a uniform probability model. And in some probability experiments, this is reasonable. Other experiments, it's not. Um, it, uh, typically, you know, one is uh, able to justify a uniform probability model when there are some underlying symmetries uh, you know, present uh, in the problem. So if the die is, you know, perfectly symmetric, uh, then, you know, probability of getting a one and probability of getting a six should be the same. And so it's reasonable to assign uh, equal probabilities to uh, these two outcomes. Um, but what about in general, you know, and in general, uh, uh, one may argue that the only real way to talk about probabilities uh, is in uh, terms of long-term relative frequencies. Uh, namely, we should say that, you know, probability of an event is 0 0.6 if when you conduct the experiment a large number of times, then about 60% of the times you see that the event A occurs, right? Means the reason we think, you know, probability of A, uh, probability of getting uh, a, a six when you roll a die is one sixth. The reason, the, at least the, the logic in our head is that if I uh, uh, roll this die a million times, then approximately one sixth of times I will see the number six. And, and that's uh, really, you know, uh, in some sense, the only way to uh, give rigorous meaning uh, to probabilities. Um, of course, you know, uh, there are obvious problems with this. You know, what does one mean by a large number of times? What does it mean um, uh, approximately? Uh, and uh, in fact, even more serious problems, there are situations where repeated trials are not possible, right? Means, for example, if I want to assign the uh, probability of, you know, uh, that a certain defendant is guilty or not, I don't have the luxury of doing lots and lots of trials. And in that case, you know, the probability is assigned based on, you know, some um, uh, relevant information or your belief about uh, the individual, about the circumstance and things like that. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, uh, the assigning probabilities uh, to events is, is a complicated affair. Uh, um, um, but nevertheless, you know, uh, whatever approach you use in order to assign probabilities, you know, there are basic roots, you know, there are basic consistency properties, you know, any assignment must uh, uh, satisfy uh, for it to be sensible, for it to make sense. Okay, so, so that leads me to this, uh, you know, my uh, perhaps uh, only definition um, uh, of this slide, uh, namely that of a probability space and a, a probability assignment or probability function. So a probability space, uh, you know, consists of um, uh, a sample space, uh, uh, which I denote by omega, which remember is a list of all possible things that can happen when you conduct the experiment, uh, and uh, uh, an assignment uh, or a function p, which takes an event, remember a event is any subset of the sample space. It takes an event as an input and returns 
a number which we denote as p of a, a number which lies between zero and one as an output. So in other words, p is a function from all the subsets of the, the, the sample space uh, to the interval zero one. And, uh, and for it to be a, you know, a legitimate, uh, a valid probability assignment, it must satisfy certain basic axioms and the axioms of probability. Every field has its axioms and these are the axioms of probability. Uh, so the first, uh, and, and, and they're intuitive, right? So the first one says uh, probability of an empty set is zero. So remember what probability of uh, a set means, it's the probability that when you conduct the experiment, the outcome will be in, in that particular event. So uh, of course, you know, when you conduct the experiment, something will happen. So probability that nothing happens must be zero. So, so assigning a zero to probability uh, as a probability of empty set is, uh, is, uh, is almost, um, uh, you know, um, uh, immediate, you know, that's a, a natural thing. The same thing uh, for this one, that probability of the whole space is equal to one, you know, probability of omega is one. When you conduct the experiment, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, the outcome will certainly uh, uh, belong to this set. Uh, and so, you know, probability that, you know, uh, you can think of this as the probability that something happens when you conduct the experiment. Well, probability that something happens is always one. Okay, so these are perhaps the two, uh, 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 first two basic uh, axioms of probability, which, you know, are almost trivial. You would say, okay, that, that's uh, obvious. Uh, and the third one perhaps uh, is uh, requires a little bit uh, uh, more thinking, but uh, uh, again, uh, it's um, 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 uh, it's a natural uh, uh, requirement, uh, which says that if a1, a2, a3 are a bunch of uh, disjoint events, so just remember uh, disjoint event means that if you look at any two events uh, in this uh, collection, uh, their intersection is empty. So A1 intersect A2 is empty, A3 intersect A7 is empty. So any two uh, sets, their intersections are empty. Uh, then probability of the union of ages uh, is the sum of the probabilities of each of these ages. So maybe I can write it in a slightly more expanded notation, probability of A1, union A2, union A3, like that is equal to probability of A1 plus probability of A2 plus probability of A3, like that. So if you want to find the probability of the union of these disjoint sets, you can find that by finding the probability of A1, probability of A2, and then adding them up. So this one looks, you know, coming out uh, uh, of the blue a little bit, but this is also not very strange. You know, if you think about, for example, the uniform probability model, and let for uh, simplicity only consider the case where you have two events, A1 and A2, which are disjoint. So in uniform probability model, of course, probability of A1 union A2, we know is the number in A1 union A2 divided by the number in the sample space. And now since A1 and A2 are disjoint, the number of outcomes in A1 union A2 is simply the number of outcomes in A1 plus the number of outcomes in A2, right? The picture is something like this. You know, uh, this is your uh, whole space and somewhere here is A1 and somewhere here is A2. And so the number of outcomes in A1 union A2 can be found by counting how many there are in A2 and how many there are in A2, uh, A1. Since there is no intersection between them, I don't have to do anything, anything else. And so of course, uh, so then I can write this as number in A1 plus number in A2. Which of course in the uniform probability model, you know, this is probability of A1 and this is probability of A2. So yeah, so this statement here is sort of, you know, you can uh, see where it is coming from by just thinking about the uniform probability model and, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, just two events. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is uh, one of the foundational axioms of probability from which, you know, many, many things come out of it. And, uh, you know, again, uh, um, you know, one can uh, do a um, lot of stuff um, uh, with the, just this definition of probability. Um, and uh, for example, this definition is completely adequate, you know, if your sample space is finite or it is countable. 
Uh, so remember uh, how I started this discussion, you know, I said, uh, I want to uh, say why measure theory is important uh, in probability. So I'm, I'm getting to that point. And, and uh, so the point is that, you know, if, if the, uh, uh, the sample space is uh, finite or countable, this definition of uh, uh, a probability space and probability assignment is, is you know, totally an adequate definition. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, one starts seeing uh, problems uh, uh, when one wants to deal with um, uh, sample spaces, which are perhaps uncountable. So, uh, so, so imagine an experiment uh, where you are uh, picking a point at random in the interval zero to one. So, uh, you know, um, uh, in this particular uh, experiment, of course, your uh, sample space is the full interval zero to one because you can put, pick any point in the interval zero to one. And now if you think about, you know, well, it's, since you're picking a point at random, you know, the chance of picking a point here is same as chance of putting, picking a point there. Uh, a reasonable probability assignment for this experiment should say that if you ask what is the probability of an interval A to B, namely the probability that when you pick a point, it lies the in, in the interval A to B, then this probability should be just the length of this interval, namely B minus A. So the larger the interval, the larger the chance that you will uh, get uh, your point in that interval, and specifically in this manner, you know, the, it should be the length of that interval. Uh, so this this number should represent the likelihood uh, that the chosen point lies in the interval A to B. Okay, so so then it is clear how to talk about probability assignment of intervals of this, uh, you know, um, uh, subsets of omega. Uh, but uh, remember, there are many many other subsets of uh, um, Sorry, my, this thing is not working. Uh, so, so there are many, many other subsets of uh, zero one which don't look like intervals. You know, you can imagine your crazy set obtained by taking bunch of intersections, bunch of unions and things like that. Uh, and so you can ask, uh, can one describe the probability, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of an arbitrary uh, subset in, uh, in zero one, you know, with this uh, um, understanding that the probability of an interval should be the length of the interval. And so you can go quite far with this kind of, uh, uh, you know, an approach, uh, you know, because you know that, you know, uh, probability satisfies, function satisfies certain rules, you know, probability of the empty set is zero, probability of omega is one, probability of disjoint union is the sum of the probabilities. And from there, you can conclude many other properties of the probability function. And using that, you can, you know, determine probabilities of many other kinds of the in, uh, of intervals. You know, for example, if I want to say, you know, what is the probability of, um, uh, you know, um, 0 0.1 comma 0 0.2 union 0 0.4 uh, comma 0 0.6. Now this is, although not an interval, I can say what this probability is because of the rules of probabilities, which says that it should be the sum of the probability of this event and the sum of the probability of this event. Probability of this event is uh, 0.1, probability of this event is 0.2, length of these intervals. And so the probability of this event should be 0.1 plus 0.2, which is 0.3. But okay, but these are still very special type of uh, subsets of omega. So the real uh, question is uh, this procedure of using the properties of uh, 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 the probability function and this intuitive definition of probability of intervals, does it give uh, assignments for all sets in, this, uh, in the sa sample space, all subsets of omega? And that's where uh, you know, uh, there's a sad realization that uh, that uh, that's cannot happen. So uh, there's a theorem which says that there is no probability assignment for all subsets of zero one uh, consistent with the rules of probability uh, such that probability of the interval A to B must be is B minus A. If you want this property to hold, you cannot give a legitimate probability assignment for all subsets of zero one. And that's the, you know, uh, that realization is in some sense, uh, the starting point of measure theory. Uh, and you, uh, uh, you know, uh, have to think about, okay, what type of sets I can talk about uh, when I'm talking about probability assignments. And, you know, you have to make uh, uh, rigorous the notion of measurable sets, the sets to which you can assign uh, uh, probabilities or measures and how one assigns measures to such sets. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, a crucial ingredient uh, in this theory, you know, of course, you know, in this lecture, I'm not going to develop this theory, uh, 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 but uh, let me just say that one crucial ingredient in, in this theory of uh, measure uh, is the notion of integration with respect to abstract measures on general spaces.
Okay, so maybe I'll uh, I'll say a, a couple of uh, quick words on that, and then we'll you know come back to Earth. This, yes. There's one question at this point. So this is regarding the axiomatic approach to probability, which we have defined so far. Uh, so it says it's easy to simulate an experiment and find relative probabilities using coding. And that to over large data sets any number of times. But how can we simulate human thinking or brain pattern? Exactly. So, so, so you know, uh, this uh, this idea of uh, a frequentist approach uh, for uh, you know, um, uh, you know, assigning probabilities, uh, it's not a cure all. You know, uh, as I was talking about this other experiment, you know, uh, how do you say whether an individual is guilty or not? If you want to assign probability to whether an individual is guilty or not. I mean, there is no way of uh, you know uh, doing repeated uh, simulation experiments uh, to um, you know um, uh, figure out what that probability should be, and so you know uh, there is not one way to um, uh, uh, come up with probabilities uh, of um, uh, of events of interest. And and let me say you know these uh, probabilities are not in some sense uh, global truths or something. You know these are are are, are ways of interpreting um, um, or uh, you know, giving some information to the uncertainty around it. They need not be perfect. And so, you know, uh, uh, but in order to do theory with it, you know, do analysis with it, they need to satisfy certain consistency properties. That's all you need. But how you come up with that, there's a lot of flexibility depending on what you're trying to get to, you know, what your goal is. You know, in any, any uh, uh, real uh, um, uh, physical problem, you only want to get to truth up to a certain level of accuracy, to a certain level of uh, honesty, and 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 you know that's that's you know once you kind of had made your um, peace with that, you can come up with your probability assignments that will give you that. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that answers your question well, but uh, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, I was just ta talking about a theory of integration, you know, theory of integration um, uh, with respect to uh, uh, abstract measures. But, you know, uh, that, of course, uh, uh, you know, those of you who are in uh, uh, high school or perhaps even in college, uh, you know, uh, uh, would not have seen uh, uh, what that thing is and what it means. But what perhaps you uh, uh, would have certainly seen are, you know, integrals of this kind, you know, integral of a function from zero to one uh, fx dx. You know, these are what we called uh, Riemann integrals, and we, you know, talk about how to compute Riemann integrals in our calculus classes. Uh, but we also talk about integrals of this type. You know, Riemann Stilges integral, where instead of dx we have d of a of x, where a is some increasing function. And uh, and how do you, uh, uh, you know, make sense of these integrals? Well, uh, the usual way is uh, through as limits of uh, Riemann Stilges sums. You namely, you think approximate. Uh, this thing as you know uh, um, as a sum of this uh, of this type f of x i times a of x i plus one minus a x i and you add over uh, you know a partition of the interval zero to one so you know you look at a partition zero less than x one less than x two uh, of one and you look at the increment of a over these uh, terms in the uh, partition multiply with the function f uh, at the left end point at the partition add over all uh, points. And that gives you an approximation for this integral, and uh, you know, uh, and the definition of this integral is that you know it is the limit of such sums as the partition gets finer and finer. You take the limit as the partition gets uh, size uh, goes to zero, uh, and that's how such an integral is defined. And measure theory sort of takes off from here. You know, it, it, its goal is to you know define integrals of more general type than the one that you see in your calculus classes, maybe the Riemann integrals or Riemann Stilges integrals, but more abstract integrals. And I have just one more slide on this and then we'll uh, um, uh, go to something uh, uh, less abstract. Uh, so, uh, so here is uh, you know, uh, 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 one um, general fact that to every increasing function, uh, there is a probability assignment uh, mu a, uh, so increasing function a, there's a probability assignment mu a uh, on a, a natural collection of subsets of zero one, not all subsets of zero one, but a natural collection of subsets of zero one, the so-called Borel sets, such that it satisfies that mu a of the interval x to y is simply a y minus a x. So in the special case when a of x is x, 
it will be mu i mu a of x y simply y minus x. And uh, and for a rich class of functions, one can give meaning to an an integral which looks like this. So this is for you just a notation right now. You are integrating a function with respect to a measure. What does it even mean? Uh, but uh, what I can say is that uh, if f is a continuous function and say a is a continuous function, then this abstract integral that you will see in your uh, typical measure theory class uh, reduces to this Lebesgue, uh, still, uh, sorry, uh, Riemann Stilges integral that I just showed you in the last slide. Specifically, if a of x is equal to x, this, this abstract integral will simply reduce to the Riemann integral that you see in your calculus classes. So in, in some sense, you know, measure theory is an extension of uh, the notion of uh, integrals and uh, integration that you see in your calculus classes. But now you're trying to integrate much, much more general functions, much more uh, with respect to much more general uh, uh, you know, uh, measures and over much more general uh, spaces. So I won't say much about it, uh, more about it than, than say that you know, this is a far reaching theory uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, this is um, uh, at the backbone of probability theory. And uh, you know, one kind of um, uh, the, this is the first step one has to cross when if one wants to um, um, uh, study probability theory at, at a deep and an advanced level. Okay, um, so um, so back so to one, work. So there's one yes. question here. Uh, could you give an intuition for what a Borel set is? What does it look like? Uh, it's, uh, well, okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> it's very hard to give <laughs> intuition of a Borel set. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so um, yeah, so I think I'll have to uh, talk about things like um, uh, sigma fields and, and it's, it's going a little bit, uh, you know, out of the territory I want to. Uh, so, so you could say that Borel sets uh, is a huge collection of sets. It contains intervals. It contains countable unions of inter intervals. It contains, you know, uh, uh, countable intersection of intervals. You can combine unions and intersections. You can combine, uh, uh, you know, uh, unions and uh, uh, sets and complements of sets. And you can imagine all kinds of possible sets you obtain by taking these kinds of different operations. But uh, that still doesn't give a full picture. So, and 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 for that picture, I think. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, I, I will postpone this, you know, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, so uh, the, back to the uh, the quote that I, you know, I, I, I sent in my abstract, uh, this uh, famous quote by Leo Breiman, which says, uh, you know, probability theory has a right hand and a left hand. Uh, and uh, in, on the right is the rigorous work and on the left is the probabilistic thinking. And as I, you know, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, emphasize in the last slide, in order to flex our right arm, you know, we'll need to learn a, a lot of math first. And so today I'm not going to, you know, maybe uh, um, uh, do that. Uh, and so today we'll only use our, uh, you know, left hand and talk about uh, a little about probabilities on uh, finite spaces. You know, I just wanted to give you a flavor about, you know, um, uh, the um, right hand but today, you know, I just want to, um, um, you know, talk about uh, what uh, one can do with the, our left hand without uh, learning too much of theory. And I'll need, uh, you know, uh, 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 a few concepts. You know, uh, one first concept is that of a, a conditional probability, and one can argue that this is one of the the, the key ideas in probability theory, which distinguishes it from uh, abstract measure theory. Uh, so, so what is it? So uh, for this, you know, imagine a finite sample space omega. You could even imagine that experiment of rolling a die where the outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six, and you know some probability assignment. So for example, for a fair die assignment, probabilities of each one of them are one over six. Uh, then the uh, conditional probability of an event A, uh, given that another event B uh, uh, is simply the updated probability of the event A, given that the inf uh, given the information that B has occurred. So it is the updated probability of the event A given the information that B has occurred. So maybe let's talk a little bit about this. So uh, back to our uh, experiment where omega is uh, this uh, simple roll of a die, which is a fair die, and A is you know getting an even number, and uh, B maybe is uh, getting a number which is uh, greater than uh, four. 
uh, uh, greater than or equal to four. So maybe four, five, and six. Okay. So, uh, so let's think about what is probability of A. Well, we computed it earlier, you know, basically uh, this is probability of getting an even number, you know, three out of six possibilities, you know, so probability of A is just half. So that's easy. But now I'm asking, well, what is the uh, probability of A given that B has occurred? So the, the, what you have to think about is that somebody has rolled the die for, uh, for you that person didn't show you what's the outcome of the die, but just gave you the information. Well, the result of the die was a number which is larger than or equal to four. That is the number was a four, five, or a six. Now, and you are asked, well, what, what is the chance that uh, you, know, you got an even number? What is the chance that uh, uh, A has occurred? So you know, given that B has occurred, what is the chance that A has occurred? So this is, you know, probability sometimes also denoted as A given B, you know, probability of A given that B has occurred. Well, again, the, I, the answer is simple. You know, once you know that, you know, four, five, and six have occurred, then that's really the universe of possibilities for you. And all of these three, you know, have an equal chance of occurring. There's no reason for any of uh, uh, one of them having a, have a higher chance than the other. And so the probability that you got an even number, well, there are two of them which are even, one of them it's odd. So the updated probability that you got an even number is not one over two anymore, but it is two over three. So this is the updated probability of the event A given that B has occurred. So maybe let's you know, uh, 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 think a little bit more about how did we arrive at this, interval, uh, at this answer. So of course the number three, that represents the number of outcomes in the event B. Right, uh, so three corresponds to you know uh, that there were three outcomes in four, five, and six. And what does the number two corresponds to? It is the number of outcomes which are even inside this set B, which is, uh, in other words, just the inter the number of outcomes in B intersected with A. Remember, A was the event that the outcome is event, so uh, outcome is even. So I'm really looking at outcomes in this set, which are even. So really what I'm looking at, uh, you know, the outcomes in B intersect A. So really the numerator represents the number of outcomes in A intersect B. So that's what, uh, you know, uh, this uh, updated probability of A given B, uh, at least in this example can be viewed as the number in uh, A intersect B divided by the number in B. So uh, maybe I'll do a little algebra and I'll divide the numerator and the denominator with the number in the whole space. So of course I haven't changed anything, right? I've divided both the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. But now uh, I can give a different interpretation to this right-hand side. You know, So this guy in the numerator is exactly the probability of A intersect B, right? Means that's... Uh, uh, how the probability of A intersect B is given in this uniform probability model. And the denominator, of course, is, is really the probability of B because that's uh, the definition of a probability of an event in a uniform probability model. So yeah, so this is a, you know, a, a formula for computing conditional probability uh, in, uh, for a uniform probability model. But, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, um, it's... Um, um, this definition, you know, extends to, for, to a general uh, uh, setting. And in general, we say that the conditional probability of an event A given B, which we denote like this, uh, you know, is given by this definition. So uh, I justified this formula for the uniform probability model, but for a general setting, you can take this as the definition of conditional probability. So this was one thing that I wanted to talk about, you know, the, the, the notion of conditional probability of an event given another event. But there is one more thing that I need to talk about, and then we'll talk about some, uh, some examples. Uh, and that's uh, what is uh, called as Bayes rule. You know, this is a far reaching uh, 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 fact, which uh, shows up in um, all kinds of uh, 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 areas in modern, modern sciences, you know, uh, uh, many, many different applications. And so it looks like very simple uh, thing, but it has many, many applications. Okay, so what is Bayes rule? So first thing is I'm just writing the formula for conditional probability that I wrote uh, up here uh, in my first display, probability of uh, A given B is probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. 
Next, what I want to observe is that in this formula, if I multiply with probability of B both sides, what I can also get is a slightly uh, uh, an alter alternative way of writing this formula, which is probability of A intersect B is probability of A given B times probability of B. So this is just rewriting of this formula by multiplying probability of B both sides. The other observation I have is that, of course, A intersect B is same as B intersect A, right? Means these, this is a symmetric cooperation. So on the right-hand side, I could change the role of A and B. So this is also the same as probability of B given A times probability of A. Once again, because of the symmetry of the operation of intersection. So now let's go back to this formula. So, you know, this specifically this numerator, this probability of A intersect B. And I like to use this formula you know, this formula for computing probability of A intersect B, specifically the second line. And so I've just plugged that in here and I get this new formula. And so what I have done is at the end of the day, I've written a conditional probability of A given B in terms of another conditional probability, a reverse conditional probability. So probability of A given B has been written in terms of probability of B given A. And of course, other some other probabilities as well. And this is what is called the Bayes rule uh, Bayes formula, and you know, it plays a very, very important role in probability um, and so on. Okay, so these were the two facts that I needed to uh, get our, out of the way. And so, you know, I wanted to, um, you know, maybe then talk about a couple of uh, fun stories about conditional probabilities, you know, uh, uh, that, um, um, that that are amusing, I guess, amusing and also sad, I guess. So, uh, uh, so this is one very famous uh, example. Of a, of a trial in the US in 1998, uh, you know, Sa Sally Clark was tried for murder uh, after two of her sons died shortly after birth. Um, and, uh, you know, during the trial, an expert witness for the prosecution testified that the probability of a newborn dying of, uh, you know, this um, SIDS uh, was uh, one over 8,500. So the probability of two deaths due to SIDS in one family was one over 8,500 square which is one in 73 million. Uh, therefore, he continued that the probability of Clark's innocence is one in 73 million. And so, you know, she's, uh, there's very high, uh, high chance that she's guilty and so she should be convicted. So, you know, of course there are uh, 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 problems with this logic, you know, um, and there are two uh, definite problems with this logic. So uh, the first problem is, you know, we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, probability of two things happening, probability of, of the first death and the second death, which is like probability of an intersection. And it is being claimed that the probability of the intersection is the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. So a statement of the following sort, that probability of D1 intersect D2 is probability of D1 times probability of D2. But we saw from the previous formula in, in the Bayes rule calculation, for example, that this is not the correct formula. The correct formula is this, probability of D1 times probability of the second death, given that the first death has occurred. And you can imagine that this probability could be a much higher number than this one, because you know, there could be genetic factors. There could be you know, uh, um, uh, environmental factors. You know? So the, given that you know, uh, uh, one death has occurred in the family, the chance that a second death has uh, occurs in that family that you know is is uh, uh, is not that event is not independent of the first death so this this probability could be a substantially higher number than this one but there is a much more uh, 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 serious problem uh, with this uh, um, um, this logic uh, and that is that the expert in this case has confused two different types of conditional probabilities so the, the expert claims that the probability of, of observing two newborn deaths, if the defendant were innocent is extremely low. And that's what it is saying. You know, the probability of one death is this, the probability of two deaths is this. So, uh, uh, so that probability is one over 8,500,000 square. So namely this probability is very small. That given that the person is innocent, probability of two de deaths is very small. But that's not what we are interested in. What we are interested in is the probability of innocence given that there are two deaths in the family. We know that there are two deaths in the family and we are asking what is the probability that the person is innocent. So it is the, this conditional probability that is relevant, not this conditional probability. 
And this conditional probability, of course, you can find using Bayes' rule, you know, means uh, is given by this formula uh, that I wrote earlier, probability of two deaths given uh, innocence times probability of innocence divided by probability of two deaths. And so this is the real answer. And, you know, uh, uh, so if, if you do some back of the envelope calculations uh, by assuming that, you know, this uh, second death is, say, maybe five times more likely than uh, probability of D1, and, you know, probability of a person being innocent, well, you know, most of the people are innocent, so maybe it is like 0 0.999. And uh, probability of uh, there occurring two deaths in a family, that's an extremely, extremely rare event. So maybe this is like 10 to the power minus six. And if you plug all of these numbers in, you'll see that this number is close to being like 7%. So, you know, probability of uh, innocence given two deaths is not like, uh, you know, a one in uh, uh, millions or anything like that. It's, you know, 7%. Uh, but the sad uh, end of the story was that, you know, based on that uh, expert's um, 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 uh, testimony or um, uh, comments, Sally Clark was convicted for murder and sent to prison. And she spent over three years in jail before her conviction was overturned. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, uh, probabilities are, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a dangerous thing to work with if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, you know, this is a famous quote by uh, uh, a famous man, uh, Martin Gardner, that in no other branch of mathematics, it's so easy for experts to blunder as in probability theory. Uh, and, um, and so, um, Maybe I have uh, eight minutes left and uh, maybe we'll talk about one more example. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is one uh, other uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, um, uh, thing about conditional probabilities that how um, uh, they can, um, uh, can easily lead to uh, misleading conclusions. Uh, so here is an example. So, uh, oops, <laughs> sorry about this. What happened? So there are two doctors, uh, Dr. Good and Dr. Bad, and each of them performs two types of surgeries. One is a serious surgery, like a heart surgery. And the second is a trivial type of a surgery, which I just call a banded removal, you know, uh, almost, a, 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 um, um, uh, you know, a, a very, very simple uh, uh, operation. Okay. Uh, each surgery can be either a success or a failure. And these are the records of two uh, of the two doctors, you know. So this is uh, Doctor Good, and this is Doctor Bad. <coughs> so, as you see, <coughs> so just staring at these now. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me just take one more sip. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so if you just stare at these numbers, uh, you know, you, you just looking at them, you can see Dr. Good is doing a better job than Dr. B. Um, but, uh, you know, imagine uh, I'm a, a patient and I'm in, uh, I'm, I need to get a surgery and I have uh, access to these records and I want to uh, see which doctor should I choose, Dr. G or Dr. B. And a natural thing for me to uh, say is let's look at, you know, what is the uh, probability of a successful surgery given that uh, uh, Dr. G conducted the surgery? And what is the probability of a successful surgery given that Dr. B conducted the surgery? So yeah, if you look at probability of S given G, you know, that's given by the conditional probability formula, which I wrote earlier here. And so, yeah, now you want to find what is probability of success uh, S intersect G. So successful surgery given by, uh, intersected with that Dr. Good does the surgery. So, um, so let's see uh, how many of them are there. So these are the ones by Dr. Good and the successful ones are, uh, are these. So there are 80 of them. And so there are 80 out of a total of 200 surgeries, right? 100 here, 100 here. <clears throat> so yeah, so this probability is this. 
And what is the probability of G that a surgery is done by Dr. Good? Well, 100 surgeries are done by Dr. Good, 100 by Dr. Bad. So probability that uh, surgery is done by Dr. Good is 100 over 200. So probability of successful surgery, given that it was done by Dr. Good is 0 0.8. Now let's also compute what is the probability of uh, success uh, given that it is done by Dr. B. So once again, it is given by this formula, S intersect B divided by probability of D. So let's see how, how many, uh, 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 what is the probability of success in uh, intersect B? So these are all Dr. B, so these are all success. So that is um, 83. So that's 83 out of a total of 200. What is probability of B? Well, again, 100 out of 200. So that's 0.83. So uh, looks like uh, Dr. B is what I should go for if I need to get a surgery. Uh, and uh, so this is, of course, very counterintuitive. If you're paying any attention to these numbers, you'll say this is uh, bogus. Uh, and uh, so why is this bogus? Uh, well, so let's uh, you know think about um, uh, if I'm trying to get a surgery, right? Means uh, I, if it depends on what surgery I, I ever want. If I if I want a heart, a heart surgery, then I should look at numbers corresponding to heart surgery. I shouldn't be paying attention to you know a bandaid removal uh, operations. So you know, let's just focus on heart surgery. So 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 now I'm going to look at different numbers. That what is the probability of uh, of success uh, given that you know it is a heart surgery conducted by Doctor Good. So probability of S given G intersect H. So, um, so S given G intersect H. So of course, you know, that is given by S intersect G intersect H divided by probability of G intersect H. So S intersect G intersect H is what, you know, so you have to look at Dr. G, you have, look, have to look at success and you have to look at heart. So there are 70 there. So that's, that's what you get 70 over 200. And G intersect H, well, okay, so you have to look at Dr. Good, you have to look at heart, so that is 90. And so that is 90 over 200. So that's the probability of a successful surgery, uh, uh, given that it is done by a Dr. Uh, Good and it's a heart surgery, seven over nine. Now let's do the same about success given, um, uh, it, it's a heart surgery done by Dr. B. All right, so let's look at, uh, you know, Dr. B. So S intersect B intersect H. So uh, this is B, these are all uh, S, and this is H. So there's uh, only two in S intersect B intersect H. So that gives you two over 200 here. And uh, what is uh, the number in B intersect H? Well, let's look at, uh, again, B is all of this, and uh, H is all of this. Uh, so this is uh, 10, I guess. So you get you know 10 over 200, so two over 10. So now you see something that you expect, you know that uh, um, that uh, Dr. Good is doing a better job on heart surgeries uh, than Dr. Bad. And you say, okay, well, so the reason I made a mistake earlier was because I kind of uh, 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 you know uh, gave uh, Dr. Bad uh, credit for uh, the um, you know easy surgeries, and uh, Dr. Bad was good at easy surgeries, and that's why it confounded the results. So, uh, but here is the kicker, right? Now, if you start thinking about uh, uh, just amongst uh, surgeries, uh, the easy surgeries and see how Dr. Good and Dr. Bad do. So let's look at the numbers. So now let's look at the uh, uh, probability that doctor uh, of a successful surgery, given that it's an easy surgery and it's done by Dr. Good. So S intersect G intersect E divided by G intersect E. So S intersect G intersect E. So this is G, this is S, and this is the easy one. So it is 10. So that gives you the numerator 10. And of course, you know, uh, the, the G intersect E is, uh, is uh, also 10. So this is simply, simply 10 over 10. So that's one. And you know, if you do S intersect B, inter uh, 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 yeah, you look at the probability of a successful surgery given that it is done by Doctor Bad and it's an easy surgery. Then basically, you know, uh, you have to look at uh, eighty-one. You know, that's S intersect uh, B intersect E divided by B intersect E, which is the total of this eighty-one plus nine. And so this is uh, the probability of success of Dr. B on easy surgery. So, so the Dr. Good is 100% success. Dr. Uh, bad is okay, but not 100%.
So even on easy surgeries, Dr. Good is doing <laughs> good. So, uh, so if you look at separately on heart surgeries and easy surgeries, you know, do, uh, Dr. Good is uh, performing better, but somehow mysteriously, when you put them together, he, Dr. Good looks worse. And uh, so, yeah, so that's, you know, uh, sometimes referred to as Simpson's paradox, you know, uh, uh, the problem is coming because you're aggregating across different types of surgeries. Uh, and, uh, and the moral of the story is that we should examine this disaggregated data. And so, you know, maybe I'll, I'll stop here and, you know, say that uh, this uh, 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 Simpson's paradox is not just a, a one-off thing, you know, it arises quite commonly uh, in, uh, um, in practical situations. And there are, you know, actually big uh, legal cases which are, are kind of associated with Simpson's paradox. Uh, and once again, it's a symptom of, you know, uh, um, you know, probability being uh, used by people uh, who uh, have no business doing it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe I'll, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of um, uh, stop at this point uh, and, um, and, um, and take any questions that uh, if you have any, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. That was indeed like an extremely like uh, with a perfect mix of humor and a lot of intuitive as well as uh, counterintuitive uh, content. So uh, thank you very much for uh, this lecture. So uh, yes. there have been a couple of questions uh, in uh, in the general context, so which I'll put forward now. And and before that, if any of you have any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, put them up in the chat. Uh, so one question, uh, this is something relating to your early, uh, the first one of your first sessions. Uh, could you give an instance of an application of uh, PDE, partial differential equations in uh, probability theory? Like how does oh, yes. that fit into the picture? So partial differential, oops, what happened here? Sorry. Uh, so partial differential equations, you know, are, are uh, have very intimate connections uh, with probability theory. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, the most basic connection uh, is through um, a certain um, uh, stochastic process known as the Brownian motion. You know, Brownian motion intuitively can be thought of as uh, modeling uh, the evolution uh, of, of maybe, you know, these uh, uh, pollen grains in a liquid. You know, you drop this pollen grain in a liquid, you know, so pollen grains are really small, uh, but they are much larger than the molecules of the water. And, you know, the molecules of the water are bombarding that, this, uh, this pollen grain at, you know, in a very random fashion. And, and because of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, impacts, the pollen grain sort of starts moving in the water in a very, uh, you know, a kind of a haphazard sort of a way, a random sort of a way. And there is a mathematical description of the, of the motion of this pollen grain, uh, which is uh, described through a probabilistic model or a, pro, a stochastic process known as Brownian motion. And, um, and you know, uh, so that, uh, that's, you know, uh, describes the randomness uh, uh, of, of this object. Uh, if one wants to talk about what are the probabilities, you know, associated with this random object, uh, you know, what is the probability at time t the pollen grain is going to be in this particular location, uh, if at time zero it was the falling location, there is a, um, a, a very elegant description of these probabilities uh, using what is known as uh, in, in PD is the heat equation, you know, the famous heat equation. Uh, and uh, so this is, you know, uh, the first basic connection between um, you know, um, um, uh, some an object which is you know arises from just randomness uh, uh, in a physical phenomena, uh, and uh, you know um, equations uh, that we see in our the first uh, perhaps a basic equation that we see in our PDE class. Uh, but that connection is far-reaching. You know, so I think uh, this is perhaps a starting point. Uh, but there are uh, you know um, there are textbooks on this uh, uh, um, uh, on this topic. You know. Uh, um, um, connections of partial differential equations, uh, you know, elliptic and parabolic uh, PDEs with, uh, uh, with um, uh, stochastic analysis, Brownian motions, diffusions, and things like that. It's a very rich field. And in fact, you know, uh, uh, one of the uh, exciting uh, parts of probability theory and, you know, very close to my heart. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, there have been, okay, so there have been quite a few uh, connection questions once again. So connection between uh, probability and geometry and what about probability and ergodic theory? Yeah, so, so uh, uh, maybe pr probability and ergodic theory, we, we have an expert sitting in the room, you know, uh, you should ask sometimes, uh, uh, you know, Professor uh, Rao about uh, those connections. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, really, um, um, 
uh, what, uh, uh, you know, ergodic theory uh, tells you um, um, uh, about our, um, you know, uh, long time behavior of, uh, you know, certain um, uh, dynamical systems. And um, so, um, so there are, you know, uh, uh, stochastic dynamical systems in probability theory known as a mark of change or mark of processes. And, um, and, you know, if one wants to understand, you know, what happens to uh, these processes over long periods of time, uh, you know, uh, uh, one wants to characterize their behavior uh, uh, in, um, you know, um, as, uh, as time becomes larger and larger, then tools of, uh, of, uh, of ergodic theory and dynamical systems, they, they are ex ex absolutely fundamental, you know, um, um, uh, things like uh, invariant measures and, um, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, ergodic decompositions and things like that, you know, uh, uh, they, they play an extremely uh, central role in studying long time behavior of uh, um, these kind of um, um, stochastic processes, uh, you know, like Markov processes and so on. Uh, so yes, again, uh, uh, ergodic theory is uh, uh, extremely center to pro central to probability theory. And, uh, you know, um, um, many um, uh, you know, researchers in the field actually, you know, straddle both of these areas, you know, equally. Um, other one was geometry, right? So, uh, yeah, so again, you know, uh, so if you're talking about, um, you know, um, um, arises in many different ways, you know, so one, uh, one uh, uh, um, particular way would be uh, when you're describing uh, evolution of um, um, uh, particles on, uh, on surfaces, for example, you know, rather than, you know, uh, you know, evolution of a particle on uh, R2, maybe, or, or uh, um, uh, maybe you're thinking about, uh, you know, an ant moving uh, over uh, a sphere, you know, something like that. And, you know, and you want to uh, describe, uh, you know, pro probabilistic behavior of where this ant is at, at some, some time. Uh, and so, you know, uh, and, 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 and so this, of course, I'm giving you a cartoon example, but, uh, the, the, but that's a, a, a starting point to, I, I guess, a, a much more sophisticated um, analysis of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the randomness and, and the geometry, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the Riemann structure of the manifold uh, and, and, uh, and the, the probabilistic um, uh, rules of the dynamics of, uh, uh, of, 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 um, of a particle. Or, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, again, you know, uh, 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 there are, there are um, um, there's a book by, um, uh, geez, I'm blanking out now. Um, Okay, so there are several books, you know, uh, which will uh, which talk about uh, you know uh, uh, stochastic analysis on manifolds. Uh, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, diffusions on manifolds and you know um, uh, Brownian motions on manifolds and things like that. And, and once more, a very rich theory uh, of uh, probability um, uh, in in that field. Yeah, Elworthy. That's the name I was thinking of. So there's a book by Elworthy on. You know, stochastic analysis on manifolds, which will perhaps, you know, those of you who are interested in that connection, maybe, you know, just browse the, uh, um, uh, the introduction of that book, you know, to get a flavor of how, you know, probability plays a, such an important role in uh, geometry. Thank you. So that was, that was really a great answer. And there is one more question by uh, possibly, I'm guessing, a high schooler who wants to know uh, in layman terms, what is, what exactly is measure three? What does it uh, capture? Wow. Ah. <laughs> so I, I guess, uh, you know, uh, what I uh, kind of, uh, uh, one answer I gave was, you know, it, it's um, uh, a way to um, um, extend our theory of integration, you know, so in high school, we see uh, integration of, uh, um, you know, continuous functions, uh, you know, uh, using um, limits of uh, Riemann sums. You know, suppose I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, that kind of an integral, but my F was, for example, much more rough, you know, how does one talk about that integral, you know, so that's one way to think about it. I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the way I started this discussion was that you want to assign uh, uh, probabilities uh, or um, um, measures uh, to um, certain types of events. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it is like a way of measuring things, you know, it, it's, you know, uh, so there is a set and you want to add, uh, add attach some um, um, 
uh, you know, um, some number to it. And how do you do it in a consistent fashion? You know, uh, in, in, in a way that, you know, means uh, if you look at measure of two things, you know, it should be the sum of the two uh, 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 measure of, uh, of the union of these two things. And, you know, uh, uh, and, and consistent with other uh, rules that I mentioned. So it, it's a way of, you know, kind of uh, um, uh, quantifying uh, or, or measuring uh, objects, you know, one could one could uh, say that. So, I guess it's not a perfect answer, but uh, 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 but that uh, that's an attempt at it. Yeah. Uh, sir. Yes. Yeah. So I have another question. So I read somewhere that like uh, probably like using random numbers, we can also like uh, it is used in cryptography mainly. So cryptography. Uh, yeah, can you some throw some light on that? Like how does it happen? Uh, you know, uh, I, I, it will be hard for me to. But uh, again, you know, you have an expert sitting in in your building on that. You know, Professor Karandikar has done a lot of work on uh, yeah. you know uh, cryptography and its role in probability. Uh, so uh, of course, you know, there are uh, um, you know there's there's um, randomized um, <laughs> algorithms for coding and stuff. Um, um, you know, I, I don't uh, have a good answer on the spot uh, because I haven't thought about it too much. Uh, you okay. can ask me, Professor Rao, if we can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, so we can come to a close. So before that, there have been a few curious students asking for uh, decent references for learning probability uh, in, in an intuitive fashion, uh, both yeah. for measure theory as well as probability. So if you could suggest some references, videos or books, anything on that. I would definitely do that. I will send some references. Uh, uh, you know, again, uh, there's, uh, I, I really like the lecture notes of uh, Professor Rao, who has you know, written a very nice, uh, uh, um, you know, measure theory and probability. There's also this book by uh, uh, Williams that I really like. You know, it's it's written. Uh, it, it's 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 a more advanced level uh, than uh, an undergraduate text. You know, it's, it's a master's level, uh, but uh, it uh, introduces you know measure theory in a very uh, friendly way. And uh, but I will certainly send you some more references uh, at uh, different levels. You know, uh, where where the students are. You know, whether they've had a course in real analysis or not had a course in real analysis. Uh, because, you know, probability you can, as you could see from the last slide, you can, uh, uh, you know, attack at very different levels, you know, uh, uh, at very different um, uh, mathematical sophistication levels. And, uh, and so, you know, depending on the entry point of the student, you know, the, uh, there, are, um, uh, there are different books which will be suitable. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some references. Oh, thank you, sir. And there's one more question. So could you give an example where the uh, measures of probabilities in the close interval 0, 1 are uh, inconsistent? So in your earlier example, when you spoke about. Uh, the, so I don't, uh, uh, don't so, so say that question again. So what, what do you mean? Probably uh, you could unmute yourself. I see you in the meeting. Mute. Uh, Sir, I was asking that uh, in the example that you uh, showed us that uh, we are uh, randomly plotting, plotting uh, points in, zero, in the interval 0, 1, then uh, how is that inconsistent that the probability that it is in A comma B interval is B minus? No, no, that part is consistent. There's no, no, uh, uh, but the thing, uh, uh, the, the, the thing that I was pointing out was the, that um, can you assign, you know, probability to any subset of 0, 1? Such that uh, you know the uh, um, that the, the this the, the assignment satisfies all the consistency rules. So yeah, so the obvious things that we can come up with, you know, uh, zero one, uh, you know, uh, zero to zero point one, and uh, you know, point three to point four, you know, those are all consistent, and and and, and many other of them are consistent. But then there are crazy sets, you know, for which, you know, if, if you make that type of an assignment that it will lead, lead to, you know, uh, you know, uh, problems. So, so the theorem says that, you know, that there is no uh, uh, assignment that is valid for all sets in zero one. And uh, so, uh, so, you know, uh, uh, it, it's, so it's not like, um, 
Uh, so the the examples that I mentioned, they were all consistent. But you know, then you know there are. Uh, 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 um, uh, but but there are you know uh, crazy sets where where you uh, you, uh, you know you couldn't see inconsistencies. Yeah. Thank you, sir. But uh, can you just give one example of such a crazy set? Because yeah, so I, okay, so that requires a construction. So you know that's an elaborate construction, and uh, you know it's not. Uh, uh, so I don't I don't have it. So it's uh, the, that's the I mean uh, it's not. Uh, uh, um, a, a simple, uh, a simple construction. Okay, sir. Yeah, we'll so probably that, like refer you to uh, refer, uh, send a link and refer you to that. Yes, sir. Exactly. That was I was asking for. I will. I will. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining, Professor Rao. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. For, and I'm sorry to bore you. <laughs> well, no, 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 not at all. I enjoyed it. It's excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Professor Amarji. This was indeed like uh, a really like uh, very enjoyable session. So starting from like the very basic notion of what an event is going to paradoxes with like an excellent mix of humor, as I said before. So you have made it extremely enjoyable. So uh, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful session you have given. Uh, so uh, let's meet once more on the 21st of uh, November when Professor Kavita Sutar of Chennai Mathematical Institute talks about kaleidoscopes and reflections in which she aims to give a gentle introduction to what group theory is and other uh, relating topics. So uh, see you all there and uh, wish you all once again a very happy and safe Diwali. So once again, thank you very much, Professor Amarjeet for this session. Thank you again for your invitation. You. It was very nice, uh, you know, talking to us. Thank you, sir. Have a good Thank day. You. Bye, bye. Bye, sir.